Hello! We have a new exciting box today. It's not a huge box and it's not that heavy, but it's supposed to have a 3D printer in it. Let's get out of the box and see what it's all about. Okay then, let's dive into this box and see what's inside. So at the top, we've got some quick start instructions. We've got the smallest, cutest little roll of PLA I've ever seen. I think this is 250 grams. We've got a power adapter. Obviously, this is a UK one, so free pin plug. And we've got a little bag of bits, including a memory card, a glue stick, something to clean the nozzle out, and we've got a USB cable. So this next bit has to be taken out whole. It's The machine is wrapped in these two bits of polystyrene. And then it's wrapped up pretty tight, so we just need to cut in there so we can separate the two halves. The packaging for this looks pretty good. It would be pretty difficult to see how this could get injured in transit. It's got quite a lot of protection around it. So just getting this out now. And that is the machine, so let's work on getting it set up. So here's a little Wii phone and you can see how big it is or small it is next to my Creality K1. I could sit that on the actual bed of that, it's so tiddly. I see there's a few little unpacking bits to do. There's a thing about uh, threading the thing that feeds the filament through. I was a bit concerned about this message here though, where it says the use of third party filaments is prohibited. Not sure what that means. I don't think there's anything special about the filament, so I'm not particularly keen on that. But I'll check out what they mean. In the meantime, let's get the uh, the bits unpacked out of here and, and get this thing through, and we'll go from there. So I was just having a look on this, and it's got some two little uh, videos about how to unpack it and how to set it up, as well as some models, some software, uh, some full PDFs with uh, all the proper instructions on it. So what I'm going to do is turn this thing on and uh, go through the setup and print test model, basically. I have to say, I prefer this to be sort of down here. That seemed a bit more sensible. But anyway, we're gonna choose English, and we're gonna load the filament. As per any filament ever, I'm gonna give it a bit of a cut, a little angle to get it right. And then we should feed in through this hole here and do that and it starts going up the tube not obvious to see where it is in a tube because it's white filament going into a white tube that seems to be about it so next and we're going to wait for the filament to come out this is going to heat to 210 degrees and we should have some filament coming out the bottom so let's look for that while i'm waiting for that heat up you can see the auto leveling system here this is a little proximity sensor. Um, I had one of these in my self-built printer that um, I did for myself. It, it basically knows when it's a certain amount above a metal plate. So by working out what that offset will be, you can basically self-level and sort of probe so you, you know what's happening. If I just turn my phone upside down and go in here, you should be able to see the control board. There is a full schematic of how this goes together in the PDF manual which is pretty handy. Okay, it's up to temp and it's saying wait for filament purge. And yep, that seems working pretty well. Out comes the filament. Doing a fair amount of filament purging, I have to say. Still telling us to wait though. Well, I pressed the button and it said continue or carry on purging and the next step is to insert the TF card. So I'm gonna just clear this and uh, stick the SD card in. Next, print from TF. And let's do the shit, which I think is a benchy, basically. Try it out. Uh, layer height, 0 0.2, 10 percent it's PLA, 12 grams. Sounds good. Print, rough. So I'm kind of interested there to see how it's gonna probe the surface. This, my one used to light up at the top when it got close to the uh, the z-axis. This doesn't give us a clue, but it's it's probing around. Which is fine, as long as the proximity knows where it is in terms of like, it could be, you know, two inches above, as long as that's consistent and it knows how far down it can then put the 
extruder, we're all good. This looks kind of sort of old school in terms of what I, I used to have again on my old one, the sort of design here. Although obviously we've got Wi-Fi set up and gubbins. It's just heating the bed at the moment. You can see it's at 33 degrees. It's trying to get to 50. The extruder is going 225. It's 210 at the moment. You're probably thinking, what can I do with a 100 by 100 mil bed? And the answer is a surprising amount. There's not that much I print that's bigger. I've got a big bed here, but most of the prints I've usually go would probably fit on that. Uh, which is why I'm interested to see how this little thing performs, to see how it goes. So I see it does a little purge here, which is cool. It seems to lay it down quite thick, that filament. It's kind of interesting, but, you know, we shall see. So yeah, by default it does this quite thick brim layer, I suppose you'd call it. But at that point when it starts doing it, you can tell that it's, it's printing in at higher resolution. So I just did a quick time lapse here. It was actually about 1 hour 48 I think this printed out in. And it seemed to do a fairly decent job. Not brilliantly quick, but not too slow. Uh, it's just something you'd let go and wait for the result really. Okay, we have finished. There's a little magnetic thing here. So that thickness it laid down was very much to put the base down. Well, it sticks pretty well. So put the magnetic plate back. And yeah, that's the, the little brim, which came off nice and easy. And here is the print, which looks pretty damn good, actually. I've got one here that I did on my Creality to have a comparison. And there is not much in it, to be fair. There's certain points where I can see the Creality is a bit more consistent. There's other points where I can see that there's some good features on this. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. So I consider that now set up. So let's dig into some of the features of this thing. Let's hook it up to the Wi-Fi, look at the cloud printing, that sort of gubbins. Okay, so what I've done, I've gone ahead and connected the printer to the network. Whoops, it's me just rolling the um, scroll wheel a little bit. And I've got this little elephant here that I want to slice. This is the Wii Builder slicer, which they talk about. And if we look here, I've got the printer connected there, so I should be able to slice this and then make it work. The reason I want to print uh, this guy is because I got one here, because it, it prints like that, but you've got to do it accurate enough so you can just slightly break the connections there to make him uh, movable. So let's slice. I haven't done anything other than saying I've got a Tina 2S printer in here, so I want to see how it works. And now I slice that, yep. Yeah, I mean, we've got a problem there, haven't we? Because it doesn't quite fit on the bed like that. Okay, so we found an edit thing, so we should be able to either resize this, which I don't want to do, or rotate it around the X, I think that should do it. Z axis, in fact, so that fits on. Let's see if we can actually remotely print this now. Click upload, upload error. Well, that's working well. Why is that? Might have a bit of a clue here. I had this out because I was going through the manual so let me pop that back in and then we'll try again. Thinking about it. I'm guessing it wants to write it to the SD card before it prints it. A very peculiar 99.86% before it does anything. What's going to happen? Don't know. Upload finished. Doesn't give us much of a, a sort of look about what's happening, but at least it tells us the status and stuff. And if we look over here, we are doing some probes and then we're going to get printing. So let's see what comes out. One slightly weird thing about this, it, it says right and left and right is 214, left is zero. That 214 or 215 is actually the temperature of the extruder and obviously the bed at 49 degrees. I'm not sure why it says right and left there. Obviously it's not as full features as some, but you know, we eventually uploaded it remotely and it is now printing. Just doing its big brim at the moment. But hey, it fits. 
Well, it's done, so let's get it off and look. It always seems to leave a little bit of string there. Comes off easy, but a bit weird. Let's see if it breaks apart nicely. Well, that came apart no problem, so you've got good articulation on the legs and the head there. Uh, it looks a pretty good print. I'm comparing, again, to the Creality, and I really have to find places to nitpick. You see in the Creality, it's a little bit more consistent through the body. We've got a couple of lines there, a couple of bubbles. Maybe on the ear, it's a little bit noisier. But uh, yeah, overall, this is a really nice looking print. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, so I think now we should try and see what the the app interface can do for us and print something from there. So there's an app you can use called Polo Print Cloud and you can then connect your printer through fairly basic instructions and it'll basically find it. And you can control it in two different ways. There's local mode, which means you're on the same LAN, i.e. Your, your local network. And it said you'll have slightly more control over it than the cloud mode. So the idea being that you could be anywhere and still get into it. You've got all the normal features about being able to look at the printer and if you get a file it will basically look on the SD card and then you can print something from there. All pretty much straightforward so far. If you go to the cloud version of it I couldn't spot an awful lot of difference. It said it goes at a lower speed but generally speaking the same stuff's here. It can just take a little bit longer to connect. As I said, I really couldn't find much of a difference between them in terms of what you can do. You've still got the same control bits, you've still got the thing where you can print from a file. But I thought what would be more interesting here is to print something from the cloud, have it slice on the cloud and send it to the printer. So if you go to the home menu, there's a bunch of different things you've got and I've gone to components and I've decided I'm going to print a screw. Uh, it's got the list of adapting devices there so it looks good and I figure I will take an M8 screw and print that. Which is just a case of hitting print, making sure it's got your printer there, selecting your material and hitting print again and basically that gets sent to the printer. And on the printer you'll see this download indication. Well I printed the screw and I thought I might print them that as well see if they go together nicely. So, yes and no. I mean, it screws in there, but it gets a bit tight. I, I've never printed this before. I, I'm suspecting that this is printed too exactly to 8mm, uh, and it needs to be a bit bigger. So it goes on the screw thread, but it just ugh, gets a bit tight. Anyway, really, the one of the last things to do is to check printing with another material, like TPU, which it can do. This is obviously PLA, and comes on this little tiny roll. And I did have a word with them about the third party filaments are prohibited. And they said they've changed that label now. What they're doing is saying, we recommend our filament because we don't know the properties of the other filaments and it could get stuck and you'll have a, a problem, which is fair enough. It's fair enough to recommend your own stuff. But you know, I've been printing with stuff from Amazon Basics, which is pretty reliable and pretty good. So I'm gonna try and get some of that TPU in there and we'll do a TPU print, something like a little camera mount that I might use on a quad and see how that goes. As you might expect, you have some things to unload. So I'm gonna preheat PLA and wait for the unload. I don't know if it's just ejects it completely or I have to do something, I'll find out. They also said um, it's compatible with more than this. So for example, Prusa slices will I use, and they said that works. I've looked and there is now a model for it. So I'll have a look at slicing from that and sending it to the printer, just to make sure we've got all the range of stuff available. So this little guy is a Roam Cam Thumb, and this is a case for it, which I'd like to print into view. It's probably come out similar to this. This is one for the Roam Cam Thumb Pro, and it's nice and squishy. This is Prusa Slicer, and I found the setup for uh, the Tina 2. And this is the slice, which looks right, because it's got like the purge and the thingy. So I've gone ahead and exported that onto an SD card. Now, my big roll of filament is not gonna fit on this little thing. So we've got a very bad thing, which is just loose filament. Don't do that. Um, I'd basically roll it onto this myself, but that's still full. So let's go ahead and see if we can print it. Well, I did just stop that because I'm just thinking support material like that 
is not what you want on TP. It's very sticky and might be hard to get off, but I can't find a way of stopping it. it this is actual support material. We've got no supports and yet it's auto-generated it, so. And the answer was I went back to Weed Builder where I could slice it without supports. <laughs> Okay, so that's just finished. Important to get this straight off because TPU comes off very well when the bed is hot. Just like that. And we took a few risks here with the um, getting this part made. It's a little bit thin there, but it, it did the raft okay. Got a couple of bits, nice and squidgy. Yeah, that printed okay. i done it a little bit thicker here. I, I saw it on the... Um, on the slice, actually, it looked like it was made a little bit of thin there, so that just could do a bit better. I couldn't remember the, the original one I printed, so I did this one. I'm just going to clean up a few of these bits, and then let's see if the camera fits in. Okay, well, I just pulled out the stringy bits. There's a few little burrs and bits there, but it should just flatten down. Here's the fun. And let's see if it pushes in. Yeah, good. I love TPU for this sort of thing. It's flexible, it takes some of the vibrations out, and this just push fits in very nicely. Yeah, so TPU, looking good. So that is the Tina 2S, what do we think of it? Well, there's some pros and cons to it. On the pro side, it's fairly cheap, it's pretty beginner friendly, it's got an auto level system, so you don't have to mess around doing stuff and having a little piece of paper and hoping it's the right amount all the way around. The actual system it uses there is, you know, not the highest tech, but it, it does the job and it does a nine point auto level system and works. We, we were getting good adhesion to the bed, no problem at all there. It's also ready to go out of the box in just a few minutes. Literally it was, pick it up, it took longer to take all the packaging out than did the actual setup. Uh, and the only sort of thing that you had to do is, is take the little tube out and, and plug it into the bit where the filament feeds through. It's printing and the technology involved is nothing outstanding, but what it does, it does fairly well and you get pretty good prints from it. Now on the con side, the only two areas really that I picked up are, is you've got a limited print area. It, it, it essentially think of it as a, a hundred millimeters cube. It's like something like a hundred by 105 by a hundred, I think. Um, as I said, for 90% for of what I do, that's not a problem. It's normally, little things like this which are easy within 100 millimeters for people wanting to print big things obviously that's less suitable the main thing i didn't like was these little tiny rolls of filament they have to be this size else they wouldn't fit but this is i think 250 grams mostly i get my stuff in a one kilo gram roll and they recommend their own and you can get like a set of four for about 30 pounds but you've got a lot of range of filaments out there so it would be nice to use these. Obviously, once one of these goes up, you could buy one of these and you can wind it on. You could get some sort of adapter where you'd put this next to it and have it feed that way if you wanted to. It's just a bit of an inconvenience given that most rolls of filament are not like this. They're, they're like this. But aside from that, it's a nice little printer. I think where it'd be outstanding is if you've got limited amounts of space. My Crowley printer, which I do like, is lovely, but it is quite big. And even the one before that, which was enclosed, needs a big space. This doesn't need a big space. It's like an A4 piece of paper. Obviously it goes upwards, but if you've got that much space on your desk or somewhere, including the bit to put the filament on, you're, you're good to go, which is really impressive. It's, it's lovely and diddly. I can imagine you can move it around easily if you want to. I never see the point of doing so, but just in case, you can do. Anyway, this has been the WeFun Tina S, and thanks very much for WeFun that supplied it. And of course, you can find a couple of links down below if you want to check it out in more detail. Hope that review's been helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.